There's enough food and water here that you shouldn't really have to leave. I'm going to have to leave town for a few days and you'll be vulnerable, so keep your heads down. I'll be back soon. time on Lost Legends of Scadriel. I will contact you when the time is appropriate to let you know what true task I have set for you. Until then, lay low and recover your strength. The Error Keller Adium was protected by a large house and all its assets. Right now, it's stolen by a crew of thieves. I'm thinking if we can track down these thieves at any speed, It'll be a lot easier than infiltrating an entire stocked and ready house that's probably got the adium locked up in the deepest, darkest cellar of it. Wasn't that fence plan? He wanted it to be crafted into a beautiful piece of jewelry and had given it to one of the jewelers in the city. You show up at the special alloy jewelry shop. Through the door, and I'm like, hello, is anyone there? Ah, hello, young mistress. What can I do for you today? Perhaps a brooch for that lovely neck of yours. She just starts laughing hysterically at, like, the politeness and flattery of him. Like, just full-on cackling down on her knees. And it lasts for a while. And and I immediately start, like, fake laughing the same way that, like, henchmen do for their bosses. That there is glass laying on the ground on the outside of the building that looks like it's been shattered. So we just saw the real Sherlock Holmes mystery. The inside job. Let me ask you this, shopkeep. You got any other employees that work for you? My name is James, and I run the shop for Mr. Conrad. Listen, give it up. We know it was you. We found the broken glass. Uh, say, listen, they paid me more money than I make here in a year to get at this ATM. In, in fact, I think it might have been more money than this ADM would have been worth back in the days of the final empire. So I, wh- what do I have to do to get you to let me keep my job and not go to prison? All you have to do is give us some names. And some money. Uh, he tells you the names Glim and Taman. And Merida, you know exactly who those two are and where their normal hideout is. Hello, and welcome back to the Lost Legends of Scadrial Mistborn Adventure Game Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Trevor. You can find me on the 17th Chard Forums as Fifth of Daybreak, and with me I have the rest of the Lost Legends. Hi, I'm John, I go by Clovermite, and I play Tony Darkomancy. My name is Brian, and my character is called Tajmil. I'm Kelly, and I play Merida. All right, so let's pick up right where we left off. You guys have just left the jewelry shop. Merida knows where their hideout is. We're doing it. Merida, you are an awesome super sleuth detective. And I give I give Merida like a, a pat on the back. She just kind of smiles awkwardly and like pushes your arm away. All right, guys, if you'd like to follow me, I'll lead us there. Lead the way. Wow, I just had uh, flashbacks to our first episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like our first episode, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> okay, so you guys know that the, or Merida note leads you to the hideout, which is actually in one of the nicer parts of town. It is, uh, I, I, I was almost tempted to call it an old building, but there are no old buildings. Um, it is one of the first buildings that was built um, starting to become a little bit in disrepair, and that's sort of intentional on their part, so that way it's sort of hidden in plain sight. Uh, it has one entrance at the front with a door. There are no windows. All of them have been boarded up, actually, I should say. And uh, it is a just one-story, nondescript building. One-story, nondescript building. All right, so as we approach this building, do we notice any sort of people standing outside of it? 
Give me a wits roll, anybody who's trying to figure that out. That'd probably be Merida, or wait, no. And Merida wits plus ten if you're burning ten. Yeah, I'll do that, plus? and that's ten, right? Or uh, I don't think you increased your ten, so it'll be nine. Nine, okay, I couldn't remember. Many Meanwhile, I'm going to be <laughs> riding everyone's sense of mystery. Okay, I got two fives, two sixes, two threes, and two ones. All right, Merida, you notice in one of the slats on the window, there are um, what looks to be like two natural knots in the wood that have been like might have fallen out after the wood was cut. But you also notice that they were perfectly placed apart uh, for an eye of somebody to peek out with their um, with their eyes without being noticed. And as you kind of lock eyes with this person, you hear a sharp intake of breath, and you see the eyes widen a little bit. All right, guys, be on the lookout. We're being spied on. All right. Where? And I, I start dramatically looking left and right. She just kind of points very slowly up there and just kind of stares at him a little. And Merida, you kind of hear the sound, like the soft sound of a bell ringing from inside the house. She kind of, like, rolls her head, like, in that agitated, like, state and just sighs. I believe we set off an alarm. Well, let's get in there now. So should we bum rush it then, Falcone? Let's get to the door. I'm going to pull out from my uh, magician's kit the, like, never-ending set of handkerchiefs tied end on end and then try to use it like a, a rope and throw it up to the window. The first story? Because it's only the one-story building. Do it. Still do yes. it. Yes. Yes. Okay, so you're, like, standing 20 feet or so away, and you're trying to lasso the window? Yes. <laughs> give me a spirit minus phys- – or give, give me a physique roll. Plus one for magician. And roll fives plus a nudge. All right, where's my physique again? I got to pull up. Uh, it'll be a total of four. Does Tony oh, regularly walk rooms. around with 20 foot of rope? It's part of the magician's toolkit. I mean, but is it, is it really like 20 feet? or is Well, it's a, it's a never-ending handkerchief. Oh, 20 feet? No, it'd oh. probably be more like 10 feet. Probably. I don't know. I also have never owned one. But haven't you ever seen those magician shows where they have like different... No, oh, I, I know the trick and the what you're talking about. I just haven't ever held one in my hand. You said that this is wood, right? The building? Yeah, that he's trying to throw to. Because what I'm thinking yeah. of is I'm going to do a coin shot if he makes this and stick the handkerchief to the wooden thing so that he can yank it then. So I've, I only okay. got a pair of ones. Okay, so you like twirl it over your head and you launch it forward and it goes forward about a foot and then falls to the ground because it has no mass. Dang it. Merida, you hear, what's he doing? Lord Falcom is going to rush the front door, and what does that look like? And uh, real, real quick before you do that, I'm going to say out of instinct, I riot sense of awe and excitement. <laughs> I don't know, but I love it. Is, uh, what Merida hears next. All right, Falcom, roll me your physique. All right. Well, I got five twos. All right, you so that's nice. thud up against the door, um, and you manage to crack it a little bit, but it, it you, you hit the door, and the door hits back. Go ahead and take one point of health damage. Man, that looks like that hurt. Okay, I, I, I would rather not, so I don't. Uh, fair enough. Well, if he cracked it, can I use my sonic speed to come bum-rushing it and finish breaking it the rest of the way? <laughs> you can try, but I... I have a sneaking suspicion you're a lot less durable than Lord Falcom is. So if you want to <laughs> right, give so me a uh, one, uh, Alamancy of six. Alamancy of six. All right. I'll give this a shot. Okay. I've got two threes, two, two, or three twos and a four. Uh, so pair of threes. Yep. 
All right, you push on the the nails, or are you like flinging yourself at the door, or are you trying to like blow the door? It depends. Inward? I mean, if there's nails and stuff, and I can push against them, I think I would do that. But if it's something that the door's already cracked, and I could just like hit it that last little bit to split it open using my speed to like kind of blast through it. You definitely notice a crack in the door, and there are metal anchors for you to push on, so I need a definitive answer on which one you're trying okay. to do. Okay, uh, if there's anchors, I'm going to take that, because that's less damage to my body. Okay, you try and push on it, and you end up skidding backwards about 15 feet. I just let out a... Uh, and Merida, you sound. hear the bell ring uh, more frantically and loudly. Wait, guys, I've got the perfect idea. And I, I saunter, like, very confidently over to the door and knock. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Does it? Uh, Merida, what do we what want? What were those guys' names? Well, we want to be let in, for one. Trevor. We want to be let Glim, in. Taman, and Liv. For one. Glit. Who? Okay, one more time, Trevor. Glim, Taman, and Liv. Glib, Taman, and Liv? Glim, Taman, Liv. Are those names from the Bible, or? <laughs> oh, is this Glim, Talon, or Liv? That depends on who's asking. I am. Oh, we're asking. I'm going to kick open the door at that point. All Can right. I roll again? Yeah, go ahead and roll again. Yeah, this I'm ready I'm to I'm really going to brace. All right, that is... Two fives and two fours, or four, three fours. Not that it matters. All right, the door but. explodes inward in a shower of uh, splintering wood. Finally, I'm asking. Tony is going and to. I'm going to look around for uh, excitement again. I'm going to look around for anybody in there. What What's it like on the inside, Trevor? All right. Um, on the inside, there is uh, two chairs, one by each window where there are the holes that are poked out. Uh, Merida, the reason that you couldn't see the holes in the other one, it was just kind of facing the other way, so it was kind of masked by the angle you were looking through, where they would be looking out the other way. Uh, and then there are two people standing there. Uh, Liv is one of them. You don't know her name, obviously. Uh, but she is standing there covering her ears. Um, seems like she's been unsettled by the amount of noise that the splintering wood makes. Um, she's fairly tall, but very slight of build. She has brown hair that she's got done up into a bun. And then on the other side is a, uh, young, probably about late 18s, like a late 18, 19, maybe 20 ish man who's got short black hair. And he is grabbing at his side where he has a dueling cane and is trying to draw it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, hold up. Doesn't have to go down like this, kid. I might approach the guy with the dueling cane. What are you doing here? Leave us alone. I'm afraid that's not going to happen today. Uh, where's where's the necklace? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I, that would moment, we be here? Do we have to go through this? Uh, at that moment... There's a trap door in the middle of the room that, like, breaks open, and you see another figure climb up from the basement who is average build. He's got short brown hair, and he's kind of got just, like, mean set beady eyes. Who's this guy? All right. Is this the full crew? What the hell is going on up here? What's going on is we're looking at a couple of thieves wondering where's the goods. I don't see how that's any of your business. All right. At that minute, I'm going to have to multi-shot in the in the face point blank. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to go down like this. No, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm like, not I'm, 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 is I'm just, I'm so just, fucking no. down to commit like straight I up murder if he has to. I shot like that. I don't think I ever have actually. You've used your multi shot on when we recu- rescued the uh, metallurgist. Yeah, but I thought yeah, that you've was used on multiple it several targets. times to uh, great effect. Oh, I'm it's talking about skill. on a single target. I'm talking about multi shot like a shotgun on a single target. I might be willing to homebrew a stunt for that for later on. Ah, uh, understandable. For, for, yeah, for the for the moment, you would just get the plus one damage bonus for your coins. Well, I don't want us to throw down in this situation. I want to see if we can get some info out of these people. 
would you maybe want to just like do a coin shot and try and like thud spook it into them? the wood at each yeah. of their feet? Yeah, I'll like, spook as them. an intimidation tactic. Yeah. And then Tony, you need to be ready to start riding that. So what do I need oh, to do? If Tony's Baba already Almancy? riding uh, excitement. Tony's just the hype man. That's He's right. like, y'all ready to fight? Yeah, we're ready to fight. Well, Apparently, I, I, no, I'm like, look at our magic. So just five. All right, all right. I got two fives, a six, a four, and a and a one. Okay, let me roll their spirit. All of them kind of raise their hands up. Uh, Taman, who was the one drawing his dueling cane, drops it to the floor, and Liv looks over and says, You don't need to do that. You don't need to hurt us. Merida here seems to be familiar with you guys. Maybe, um, Merida? Psst. Don't you know these guys? What do I know about them? You just know that they're uh, a crew that specializes in subverting uh, people to their cause, mostly through bribery, and that um, there's rumors that they're uh, they're very very adept at getting things that they shouldn't be able to get. Oh, well, maybe this is something that she would want to pick their mind for info. All right, get get. But other than like their names and their specialties, you wouldn't know like what any of their powers are, whether any of them are alamancers or anything like that, or even the number of them that there are. Ah. I know you guys. You usually are kind of like a cult kind of organization, getting people to join your cause. What are you guys doing stealing a necklace of ATM? Well, it's not necessarily that like they, they, they're not recruiting people to worship the Lord Ruler or anything, but kind of like you saw with the jewelry shop, they're very good at finding the weaknesses and security and targeting the people who might be open to a bribe or open to a favor for a favor to get what they want. Oh. Oh, okay. There are competitions. Yeah, sorry, sorry if I misrepresented that. No crazy cultist yet. Not yet. Maybe next major story arc. Mm-hmm. All right. Falcone's going to stare the kid in the eye and be like, where's the necklace? And Taman's going to kind of look over at Liv and then look over at Glim. And both of them are going to nod their head yes. And... He is going to say, I have to go downstairs to get it. Fine, I'll come with you. Tajmil? I'll lead, or I'll follow behind you guys. All right, so we'll go down. <laughs> These guys are appropriately cowed, and you open, you, you head downstairs. He's got like a little hiding spot in the wall. One of these days, I'm going to have to look up what that's called. Like a slick or something. Do you remember from Burn Notice, David? Uh, no. You mean breakfast nook? Yes, he has a little breakfast nook where he keeps valuable okay. things. All right. A dead sp- drop? I mean, and it's, it's got like a, quite, a specific yeah. like spy terminology. But anyway, let's move on. He like pulls yeah. like a little wooden panel um, or a, a brick panel out of the wall where they've dug down kind of like how Alloy has his underground chamber as well. And inside you see this beautifully wrought necklace that would appear to be of the same metal that the ATM, the Lord Ruler Steward, had given you. All right, I'll take it. All right, he hands it over to you, and uh, what do you do after that? Say, why, thank you. I'm sorry we had to bother you in particular on this particular day, but, you know, stuff happens. We had to get this back. No hard feelings, I hope. If I ever see your face again, there's going to be trouble. I get that a lot. (laughs) <laughs> but I think we're done here today, right? I mean... And I completely miss the mood of the room and very happily go over to start shaking hands, saying, thank you so much. Sorry for the cause, but, you know, hopefully we can work together in the future. And he and I hand <laughs> over the handkerchief. You can have this as, like, a souvenir. And if you ever want to come by and, like, pet fluffles or something... You know, you're welcome. <laughs> Here, take a few coins, repair that door we broke down. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, I will pay for the door. <laughs> I'm I'm going to turn to Glim one last time and be like, by the way, did you guys get approval before this whole thing? They are going to stay stoically silent. Okay. 
right Good before to they leave, to too, know. I have to ask one last question. If you were working with a jeweler, why did you guys break the window out? Why didn't you just walk out? And Liv kind of like smacks her face and she says, that was entirely that slow boy's idea. Oh, uh, what a dumb dumb. You live, you learn. Hopefully you won't make the same mistakes twice. I really hope that was a pun on her name. Because <laughs> you said you live to live. Yeah, I know. I know. I know what okay. I did. <laughs> I'm happy to. Anything else that you guys want to do? Uh, Seriously, I I do want to pay for the door. Okay, go ahead and spend a resource. You know, I think Merida is just going to take off the necklace and the tin necklace and give it to them because she doesn't really want it. Um, Liv looks at it and then she pulls one off of her own neck and like kind of jangles it in your face. It's just like, I've already got one. At that point in time, I'm going to snatch that and run out of the building. (laughs) The one that Liv has? Yeah, the, no, the the uh, tin necklace. Okay, Liv is then going to take what Meredith's tin necklace have? and put it back on and roll her eyes. Oh, no. Tony claps. That's a great magic trick. <laughs> so she took it then? Uh, as soon as Tajmil snatched the one from her hands and ran out the door, she'll take yours. Okay, cool. Net you displacement is zero. This is the most awkward robbery ever. I hope to never see any of you again. But please don't come looking for us, and I'm going to walk out the door. Lord, F- I just offered for them to come pet Fluffles. What are you talking about? You're And I turned hey, to Tony, come on. Let's go. Go. Come by. Well, Wittens will make you tea. I mean, the tea isn't as good as it used to be, but, you know, once we move back up in the world, it, you'll enjoy it. I think you need to leave now. All right. Don't have wow. to tell me oh, twice. Okay. And then I just Grumpy. bullet out of there like Sonic and the Hedgehog from away. Sega. All right, and you guys leave. Uh, where would you like to go next? House Eric Heller. Heading straight there? Pretty much, yeah. Any descent among the ranks, or is everybody good with that? Oh, I need to change Did I get first. all my stuff back? Like, was oh, there only I one one person I needed to get my stuff back from in the thieving uh, group? Yeah, you, your stuff is still spent until the next breather or rest, but for story purposes, okay. you no longer have that restriction. All right, right on. Yeah, I'm I'm good to go then to Eric Keller. Uh, Lord Falco. Uh, sure. Let's go to Eric Keller. Tony wants to change. Is anybody going to try and dissuade him of that? Wait, he wants to change what his clothes? Yep. Is it on the way at all? Um, odds it is. Even it isn't. Odds it is. Okay. So it's pretty close. We'll stop by. I don't think like. Lord Falcone's gonna hold on to the necklace and he's not gonna like go to the house. He'll avoid it by a couple blocks just so if they do follow. And he's gonna oh, be watching out for the that, following. David, up. let's head into another channel. Uh oh. Oh. Yeah, okay. Dun dun Uh-oh. dun. Entering private chat. Hello again, Trevor. Lord Falcone, you have another chance to do what needs to be done. I thought we'd have this talk. Let's Strike up a deal. Come come to the homeland, and we can talk there. Bring the ATM or don't, but I would like to speak with you. Okay. We'll talk then. Meanwhile... Here it goes. Oh, boy. Okay. We need to find something else funny to talk about this time. Yeah. Um, How about she- Tony's love of changing clothes every minute? Yeah, no doubt, boy. You must do that like at least three times a day. Hey, I, I gotta look fabulous, okay? Uh, I mean, you you are a sharp-dressed man, I'll tell you that. Thank you. I thought you were super attractive. I, I am ridiculously good-looking. It's like you walk around in $3,000 suits. Here I am, I've got a bunch of rags and bags I'm basically wearing, looking like a schlep. Oh, uh, you, you could borrow some of my outfits sometime if you'd like. Yeah, that's okay. I like to blend in among the um less favorable. Um... Entering public chat. What's up, guys? Yeah, Merida has a disguise, actually. What, what? Which kind of disguise? Why have you never used that? I'm pretty sure it's just a big, like, big fancy dress. Oh, so it's like a social disguise. Yeah. That's cool, though. Oh, so we could go to a ball together. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that's what characters like Tony and Merida are good for. Yeah. Among other things. They're respectable. I would... I'm not sure I would call my character respectable, but... 
She can at least appear respectable. Yeah, yeah she you're, can you're appear. You're like an NGO type. You're like a like CIA type character. And yeah. I can almost appear respectable till I open my mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you can get invited to places with your title, so that's sure. nice. And get by by being such a seamless lack of a threat that people just, they let you do whatever you want. Yeah. Okay, so then I'm going to quickly change this time into a burgundy suit. Uh, no ruffles this time on the white shirt underneath, but I will have a, a matching burgundy tie and a burgundy hat. Your afternoon has gone well, I hope, Master Tony. Oh, it's, it's going splendid. Thank you, Wittens. And then I go over, give him a hug, and uh, give Fluffles a hug, and then walk out the door. Okay. All right. So Lord Falcombe kept his distance from our house, our hideout, I guess. And uh, did has he seen anybody like following them? Uh, no, and Merida has not either. Okay. Nice. So Merida's been much now. Because I so. assume you've been burning tin since you left. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Go ahead and consider one of your full uh, vials gone. Okay. Uh, straight to the uh, Eric Hellers from here? Yep. Sure. All right, and uh, Sev opens the door, and he looks a little bit surprised. Oh, uh, back again, twice in one day. Uh, what can we do for you? We did it! And then tell, I give him, like, a huge hug. And oh, hands. my! Oh, you see quite some vigor in you, young lad. Show, show it to him, Merida. What do you mean? I don't have it. Oh, wait, who has it? Falcom has it. He just stands there silently. Let's go see the lord and lady of the house. I, I'm afraid that they're indisposed at the moment, unless your business indisposed. is pressing. Indisposed? Who killed these people? Uh, tell them that they need to see us right now. It is of the utmost urgency. Oh, Lord Falcone, maybe you, maybe you could mention that. It, or Sav, why don't you mention it, Lord Falcone? Maybe, maybe she'll want to see him. No need to mention that. I'm sure... Uh, Falcom, that sounds familiar. Tell her we found her jewelry. Yeah, that. And when he uh, hears that, his eyes go wide, and he gets a big smile on his face, and he ushers you all inside. He doesn't even bother with either of the sitting rooms. He, he takes you straight to the study where um, Tavish and Helena are deep in conversation, and he almost, like, bursts through the door like he's taken half of his years off his life and has this much energy. And he says, my my lady, I, I, I know I went against your wishes, but I gave these two uh, two young fellows the information, and it's, they've done it in the course of a few hours. They have found your bead of atium. Yeah, what do you think and, about uh, that? I flourish my cape and give a bow, take off the hat, that whole deal spiel. I'm going to do a backflip. <laughs> okay, give me a physique roll plus two. Plus two, so five. And while he's doing the backflip... Two fives, a four, it. a two, and a one. <laughs> Taj Mill does a backflip. I'm going to riot excitement. All right, I don't even need you to roll for that, because on hearing that the um, beat of A-Team would be returned, they would just be ecstatic. And so um, Helen is going to come up and say, well, it appears I was wrong to misjudge you. If you do and truly indeed have my heirloom. Absolutely. Lord Falcombe, give it to her. How much? Oh, good. I, I'm sure that we can find something that would be acceptable to you. What What is it that you need? Favorable trades? Do you need coin? Do you need influence? Whatever house Eric Keller has, it is at your disposal. Do you have land? Land is the one thing that is not lacking in this new world. I cannot give you any real estate in the city, for that is above my power, but I can give you the resources to make whatever claim you want out in the roughs. Okay. Well, a little bit of influence, a little bit of immediate resources... Boxings always pay the bills, and I hope that we can leave on favorable terms and we can always come back for a good favor. Also, most important of all things to me personally right now, you never tell anyone who did this. I what? think that would be... What? 
acceptable. Uh, I don't. I don't think that's acceptable. Okay. I, I definitely. I'll walk away, and Falcom starts to walk away. Stop him, Tajmo. What? I was just like, all right, all right, fine. They won't know what's going on okay. now. Hold on. I haven't gotten really anything for taking all all this time and stuff. Here I am doing backflips, and you guys aren't even, you know, will, willingly uh, giving me three resources. I say that you give us all. I don't know. Is a thousand boxing is a pretty decent size for a wealthy family? I'm extorting them, Trevor. I I want to get as much as I can from them. Okay. Um. Let's take this out of the narrative and go into metagame terms. Um, what I was thinking is plus one influence to every member of the party, and then uh, two temporary resources that would be added to your, like, like you'd basically go into the negative numbers. And so that way you're not gaining a permanent resource, but you, you have that for when you need to roll. So it's like a credit, basically. Yeah. Is that acceptable with everybody? For two of influence, you said? Uh, everybody gets, uh, did I say two? I thought I said one. I think one. he said two. I thought he said two. I, I thought he said one. A one for the influence. I think he said two temporary resources. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we basically so just reduce the amount one? spent, right? Well, uh, Tony, we'll we'll kind of deal with yours um, after you get back to the house. I have two spent as um, well. So basically, that. once everybody refreshes the next day, you'll have negative two spent. For re- for um, I got a question on that. Instead of influence, could I put it in spirit? No, she doesn't have any way to influence your spirit. Right but on. I'm... All right. So make it four, and then I can go back to having five resources now. Uh, when you refresh your resources, you'll be at negative two spent. So it's not going to erase these because those are going to regenerate at some point anyway. Probably once we're done with this yeah, scene. I see what you but mean. going forward after this, you'll be at negative two spent. All right. So four, and then. So does she agree to the terms, uh, Trevor? No, that's fine with me because I mean that's what I was planning on. Yeah, that's cool with me. Okay. I'm just not cool with the idea of nobody knowing that we did it. That's only that's uh, that that's Lord Falcom's sticking point, and that is Tony's sticking point. Lord Falcom's the one with the bracelet <laughs> and or Tony, necklace. Tony is going to attack uh, his reputation with flared shame. All right, roll Alamancy versus Spirit. Oh. Two threes. Pair of fours and a nudge. All right, um, you're going to take two. Let's make it a willpower attack, John. So, Fal. Oh, yeah, that's that. that works. Uh, Falcom, you take two willpower damage. And you feel a deep, okay. deep shame that goes to your very core. Okay. I mean, I'm all right. <laughs> Meredith's gonna go over to Tony and just be like, hey, you know, everyone may not know about it, but House Eric Heller will, and they will remember it. So, your fame went up no matter what. Uh, Tony, I, I turn, I turn to the Lady Eric Heller and, and says, okay, then tell your people. Are you cool with that, Falcombe? Lord Falcombe, what if we just say it was Lord Tony who did this? Oh, I like that idea. I won't argue with it. Merida's gonna chime in like, Lord Tony and Merida, I did stuff too. If that is agreeable. Agreed. And I shake, go out to shake hands. Lord Falcom. I I would wait. Lord Falcom would wait until we had our resources. Well, yeah. Whatever I mean, form. Terms of the agreement are going to be honored. I'm not going to try and like. Call the okay. house well, and well, out, I'm just saying, for flavor's sake, he wouldn't hand over the goods until he had well, his. No, and she's not necessarily asking you to. She's just making sure that the bargain is well struck. Oh, okay. Okay. That's fine by me. Okay, so you hand this necklace back over, and she immediately puts it on. Um, and uh, after giving you your money and then promising you the influence and favor in the future. Uh, make sure everybody has increased their influence on their sheets. By one, right? By one. Can I spend one of the new resources to get another vial of tin? You'll get a new one at the, uh, when you refresh, anyway. Oh, okay. 
And uh, anybody doing anything before you head back to Tony's, or if you're not heading back to Tony's before you leave to go back to your respective residences? Respected residences. Where does that exist for Taj Mill? Gutter? Uh, I mean, we, we kind of established can, maybe? that you had a place to go. Did I? But I just imagine it like um, Aladdin, basically, like some little, you know, scrap area with a bunch of sheets on the ground. You got a little uh, forgotten nook? Something like that, yeah. Like maybe maybe you've made a, a little place to hang out on top of a roof somewhere where you can just uh, steel push up to it. So long as it's got PlayStation, I'm not complaining. Octong! Octong! <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, are you going back to Tony's for the night, or would you be heading back home? I'm going to go back to Tony's if I'm allowed. Okay, and uh, Fal- uh, David, what were you saying Falcom was doing before you left? Oh, as we were walking home, he would probably drag Tony into an alleyway and threaten him. He'd say, if you ever use your allomancy on me like that again, I will break a bone in your body until you stop. Do you understand me? I understand. Don't do that. If we're going to work together at all, I have to trust you. And that was a direct attack against what I was trying to do. You were directly attacking what I was trying to do. You can voice your objections, but we cannot fight each other. Otherwise, I'm going to end the fight immediately. That's fair. All right. And he's going to dust him off and push him back. So, um, all right. Um, we go back to Tony's then. Uh, you go back to Tony's. Uh, do you fill Witten's in on what's going on? Witten's the barkeep, a.k.a. the butler. Yep. I'm going to, yeah, I'll just start I'll just start filling him in on everything. I would be like, man, you should have seen Tony. He tried throwing his handkerchief earlier. You need to do something. This guy's a wreck. <laughs> and uh, on as you say that, like, oh, I could do that trick again. And then uh, I pull out another handkerchief and throw it. <laughs> and again, rioting excitement. <laughs> Witten's claps and says, oh, that is one of my favorites. He's been practicing that since he was a child. Uh, more specifically, does Witten's get informed that you guys return the ATM to House Eric Keller? Yeah, I, Tony would definitely tell him. Okay, uh, jumping out of the narrative into metagame purposes, um, Tony, uh, Witten, or actually, no, let's do this in-game. Uh, Master Tony, I have to say, when when your mother, Eleanor, told me that you were making poor choices, I thought that I would be in for a, a rough time bringing you back into the fold and striking your metal true. And I thought that again when I met your uh, new acquaintance, and he gives a glare towards Tajmil. But your actions today <clears throat> and before this have proven that you have not only internalized the lessons that I have given you, but fully put them into practice. I want you to know I will be telling your mother all of the wonderful things you have been doing for this city, and I will ensure that she gives you back some of what has been taken. I do not think you are fully back in her good graces yet, but you have taken a large step towards that. And go ahead and change your permanent spent to two. And so um, after the breather that we're going to take tonight, your yeah, I'll just I'll take care of it on your sheet to manage it. But your permanent spent will be two. But for those um, purposes of what you were given by the Eric Hellers, you are at nine full resources. Yay! And then Tajmil, you can go ahead and just put negative two in yours. Um, we're going to do for another negative two. Uh, no, just resource? like erase everything. All of the standings are reset. Okay. So I, ha- all right. And um, I'm going to kind of, we're going to call this a long breather. Um, from, from this point on, you guys are going to lie low until alloy decides to, uh, bring you back to discuss the rest of the mission. Let's give everybody two advancements, um, uh, blanket for doing such a great job going through, um, doing this entire storyline and quest and succeeding. Uh, I want to give Tony one for his uh, absolute brilliance in trying to make friends with uh, Sev after they failed to convince Helena. I want to give uh, Merida one just for the way that she ingratiated herself with Helena overall. 
Um, Lord Falcom, I want you to have one for your, um, your, the way that you've just been really building your character, uh, in your interactions with the rest of the crew. And then Tajmil, I really enjoyed your side story getting your resources back. So you're going to get one for that as well. So everybody's going to get three. Um, we are going, I'm going to take over a little bit of the advancements. Everybody's going to get one that they get to choose, but. Tony, uh, these next couple of days or weeks, however long it is, I didn't necessarily decide that. You've been spending a lot of time with Merida, and she's just been training with you on the importance of um, thinking through your, you know, thinking ahead, thinking with a clear head, and doing all of the things that she's very good at. And because of that, your wits increases by one, and spend, I think it's five advancements for that, right? But what about my um, concussion and all that? I was going to spend on that. Yeah, everybody's going to get their choice to uh, spend one of their own advancements. But I'm going to um, do the second for everybody in terms of like so how my the spirit works. gets back up to seven, right? If you want to heal one of your burdens, you can go ahead and take care of that. Just let me know which one you're healing. I'll heal the concussion. Uh, Merida, you have also uh, likewise been spending a little bit of time with Lord Falcombe. Um, realizing how much of an expert he is at what he does and the need for you to be better in a combat situation. And so given some of the training that he's given you in close quarters combat, go ahead and spend five advancements, improve your physique by one. Hey, my physique is actually pretty good now. Tajmil, uh, you've been spending a lot of time with Tony because you two get along best in the group. And Tony has been giving you some tips on sleight of hand and how he does some of his magician's tricks. And nice. that is going to increase your physique by one and d- take down five advancements. So wait, I, I, I make Tony's it four the worst now? Person to give advice on sleight of hand. I mean, Tony still is a practiced magician. And so even though your stats don't necessarily let you do it all the time, like I, I, th- I think you still have things that you can teach him about sleight of hand and misdirection. It, it is what your character specializes in. Well, it's the, the the misdirection less than the actual physical sleight of hand bit. Because mm-hmm. he sucks yeah, at the physical Yeah, but you have to component. have picked up a thing or two. I mean. That's true. And then uh, Lord Falcone, uh, while you were teaching Merida about uh, her combat skills, she was kind of uh, teaching you the, the ways around some of the underclass. Um, so while you had some influence with the nobility, uh, from beforehand, and even more so with what the uh, Eric Kellers gave you, uh, she's kind of taught you how to go about through the underground and try and get information that way. And so you're going to spend five to increase your influence by one. Dang, so I increased my influence by two this time. So you said we can choose our second advancement? Uh, that's right. And then, um, Brian, if you wanted to have a multi-shot on a single target, I would make that a... Uh, a homebrew stunt for you. Um, I also oh, wanted to offer Merida a combat specialist Tinai homebrew home, uh, brew stunt that she could take, where it's kind of like um, Spook was using his savantism to kind of feel like the ripples in the air and that sort of thing. So that way, when you're burning tin in combat, you add a plus two to your physique. Oh man, that's lit. So then how much would it cost for that uh, homebrew shotgun stunt? Uh, to gain a new stunt is four. Okay, so could I possibly do nine and add another one to my physique even? No, you're only going to get to choose one. because Well, you, you okay. do the, the five from what I gave you for your physique anyway. So you'll, you'll take oh. nine total, but you only get to choose the one. So get rid of five already then? Yeah, get rid of five for what I'm improving and then get rid of another four if you're taking that stunt. And we'll call that a, a focused shot. Add that to powers. Yeah, add it to one of your stunts. Hey, actually, Trevor, the um tin eye like stunt is cool and all, but since my physique is up a pretty good amount, I actually would like to continue on the thing about um us learning from each other. And I'm gonna say that since Merida likes Tony and she was hanging out with him, she tried to emulate some of his like kind of silliness and stuff, and that has its own charm of itself. And so to spend five advancements to improve charm. I just made a new line for it because I can't delete lines, even under modifying them. Okay, that's fine. 
And Tony, which burden did you want to heal? Ah, uh, the um, concussion. I already did it. It's a mortal burden six. All right, cool. How but much would it I, cost I, to heal my uh, black eye and bruised thigh? Mortal burdens are forever unless the character spends advancements. Serious and grave burdens fade with time as detailed in recovery. See right. So we just need to look at the rules that this snippet doesn't have. Okay, so my both my injuries will just heal with time. Right. Is that what that's saying? Yeah, we just need to look up exactly how it heals. Okay. Um, well, probably I'm good with. It depends on. Um, the, Taj you know, Meal, like your, your knee is bad. Everybody take one of their grave burdens away. I'm good with that. Really? So I don't have an arrow to my knee anymore? Uh, yeah, we're, we are at a major milestone for the story right now, and that'll become apparent uh, once we get there. Yeah, you can go ahead and ease that to a, uh, a grave burden. And then you can also get rid of your limp, Tony. Nice. And Falcom, go ahead and choose one of those you want to get rid of. Okay, I got rid of my black eye. I figure that would heal okay, faster. Okay, and then you can spend your advancements on something else. I don't know quite what I'm going to choose yet, to be honest. I got a lot of choices, and I think it's probably best afterwards. Okay, so you receive a summons from Alloy. Uh, just a note that's hand-delivered to Tony, uh, who finds a way to rally the rest of the group together. And you head back to the uh, now-familiar house, where you've been multiple times. You go down into the basement, and as you descend, you hear the chatter of voices that uh, Merida instantly recognize all but one of them. And as you head into the basement, and you get down off the ladder, and you turn around, uh, you see several familiar faces. Sitting in a large circle of chairs are Tesney, Glim, Tavon, Liv, an unknown woman, all sitting there, and they all turn to you, and Tamon stands up so quickly that his chair topples over backward. Uh, but Alloy kind of raises a hand and says, Now I know that you've had your differences, but fair is fair, and they recovered that atium from you in a way that both left you unharmed and brought no harm to the operation. You had already presented it to me, so there is no harm done to what I plan to do. Save your grudge until we are done. And uh, Tesney looks over and kind of gives a smile at Merida and a wave, and he says, Hey Merida, thanks for getting me in on this thing. Couldn't have done it without you. She just kind of waves back and smiles and is like, Pleasure working with you. Now, everybody take a seat. We have a lot to talk about. For you see, this job is probably the biggest job that has gone down since the downfall of the survivor. And Alloy leans forward, and he looks at everyone in the eyes as he pulls his hood back, and you get his first look at his face. Uh, obviously, Terrace, uh, he's got earrings all through his ears, uh, piercings underneath his eyes in the kind of modern style where, like, piercings anywhere they can go. Metal all throughout his body, as, as many places as he can put it. And as he looks each one of you in the eye, and you kind of feel the gravity of the moment, he says in a low, low voice, I want you to steal from the Lord Mistborn. I drop a coin right then. And then I, and then I just am like, I've been waiting for you to say that all night. And uh, that's where we are going to end this first season of Lost Legends of Scadrial. Hooray! We did it! Yay! Yeehaw! All right, so we will uh, catch back up with this group in a couple of months, giving them a chance to record a, a few more episodes, get that up to speed. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to transition to the new group. Uh, I'm very excited to record with them. I think that uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be playing in the Alloy of Law era, using those supplements from the Mistborn Adventure game. And I'm so excited to get to know those characters and get a new story started with them, as well as return to this one. And I just want to thank everybody for going on this ride with us and you know, really helping us continue this. Uh, this is the longest RPG group that I've ever been a part of, um, the longest campaign. And uh, the commitment to the podcast really made that possible. So I, I just really want to thank you guys, the listeners, for um, you know holding our nose to the grindstone and 
giving us a reason to make sure we're committed to this. And, you know, I, I do want to reaffirm that we are committed to continuing this story because we're really getting into the meat of the story that I wanted to tell when I first proposed this podcast. So uh, we'll be back in two weeks with the new group. Uh, we're going to keep it light uh, at first with some fun short adventures going through the supplement uh, quests that they have from the Mistborn Adventure game from Crafty Games. And I hope you guys join us for that. Uh, we look forward to sharing the new story with you. Thanks for listening. Thanks Bye. for supporting us. Thank you. A couple of announcements before we leave you for the season. I want to remind everybody to go ahead and like, share, and give us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. It's just something small you can do to help the podcast to grow, help us out a little bit. And we always re love reading those things, hearing your feedback. Uh, another way you can get in touch with us is by joining our new Discord community. We've been having a lot of inf in fun interacting with the fans and interacting with each other. And I really hope that you come join us, say hi, talk to us about your favorite moments in the episode, talk to us about video games, memes, movies, whatever you want. Just come join. We'll ha we're having a lot of fun. We're growing a community there, and we want you to be a part of it. Uh, we're also holding a giveaway starting this week. We're going to give you until the next season starts uh, to get a uh, part of the Discord server. Uh, in order to be eligible for the Discord or for the giveaway, you do need to be a member of the Discord server, as I'm going to be populating the giveaway list from those people who have joined. We are giving away a set of Allomancy dice from Crafty Games, the official dice of the Mistborn Adventure game. Now, I have had these dice since I started the podcast. Uh, I bought them a couple years ago at Gen Con. Uh, they're really high quality. I love rolling them. They look absolutely fantastic. And I just don't see how anybody who's a fan of Brandon Sanderson wouldn't enjoy having a nice set of 10 Allomancy dice. So go ahead and join the Discord server. That gives you your chance to win. Uh, you can find the link in the show notes. Uh, we are going to take a small interval break between the first season and the second season next uh, in the next two weeks when we'd normally drop our episode. That doesn't mean we're going away. All it means is that we're going to have a nice fun one shot with one of the members of the second group and then two of the members of our first group. Uh, have a little fun in the time of the Lord Ruler and Vin's Ascendancy. Uh, it's a fun little one shot. I think that all three, all four of us that played um, really enjoyed ourselves and I can't wait to share that with you. Uh, two weeks after that, we will be back with season 1.5's premiere. Uh, if you do join the Discord server, you can listen to that episode early. It has been posted in the Discord already as a sneak peek. So if you want to wait, don't want to wait, you want to get another episode, join the Discord server. If you want to win a set of Allomancy dice from Crafty Games, join the Discord server. And as always, uh, we'll see you again in two weeks. Mistborn and all related properties are owned by Brandon Sanderson and Dragonsteel Entertainment. The Mistborn Adventure Game is a product of Crafty Games. Special thanks to Steve Argyle for letting us use his artwork for the logo, and to Boardroom Design for putting the logo together for us. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, at LLOS Podcast. Or give us an email at lostlegendsofscadriel at gmail.com. We hope that you'll like and share and give us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.